Hello, this is a session that I rather urgently uh, tape uh, record this without audience. So let's let's start. So this is what we did last time, last week, on section six point six. This is first order linear differential equations. We will skip six seven. So this is the numerical part of the differential equations. So related to six, uh, section six, but we'll skip this one. So directly going to the last two sections of our course this semester, which is uh, the inverse trigonometric function and their derivatives. Okay, and then later on the uh, hyperbolic functions. All right, so let's uh, start with this one. Okay, as we uh, have discussed uh, two weeks ago, yes, that was two weeks ago, uh, that we sometimes we restri uh, by restricting uh, the domain of functions, we can make a function to be injective one to one. So the inverse exists. Okay, so for example, there's a y equals sine x. Okay, so this functions. Uh, this is clearly not one to one, so there is no way you can have a uh, inverse. For example, for this y over here, or this y over here, you see you have a few x's here which related to this particular value of y so it's one two three four five so here uh, correspond to zero y equals zero you have one two three four five at least so this is clearly not one to one so there's no way you can define a uh, an inverse but somehow if you restrict the, the functions, the domain of the functions, so that the domain is the uh, maximum of the domain, so that the function is one-to-one, is -one, mm -hmm. monotone, then you may have an inverse. Okay. So this, uh, for example, here, sine x we restrict to between negative one, negative pi over two to pi over two. Here's the function is increasing strictly increasing so therefore it is one to one therefore it has inverse or you can choose uh, minus three pi over two to pi over uh, minus pi over two here this is decreasing okay so or you can choose from pi over two to three pi over two so this is decreasing therefore uh, uh, one to one and it has inverse okay so that's one way to uh, to uh, to get an inverse by restricting. And is there any way to uh, to restrict which which restriction we, we should we choose? There is no way uh, because there's a preference actually. And we prefer for sine x, okay, using this one here from negative pi over two to pi over two simply because it is symmetric. So it's with respect to zero here. Okay. okay, so that's for cosine. So this is a picture of cosine. This is not uh, not a one to one, therefore it's not down to have inverse. And so we uh, we restrict the domain. Now we choose from zero to pi here. So this is decreasing. So this one to one, therefore it has inverse on uh, this. Okay. So you see that here I try to get the, as usual, get inverse. This is sine over x, right? This is the. That's the uh, y equals x diagonal. So that's the inverse. Remember the inverse, the, the graph is that the uh, the mirror image 
of the graph, okay, with respect to this diagonal. Okay, so we get this the, the red one here, sign, and then reflect correspond to this diagonal. So we get this in the blue one. So that's the sine inverse. It's cosine inverse. Let's see. This is there. I call it. So cosine is is right there. Sorry. There. Okay. So this is the the mirror image. Okay, so let's uh, write down a few things here. Okay, so uh, fx of uh, sine x uh, or x real is clearly uh, not monotone. So no inverse. Okay. So respect to the pi over two to pi over two. Therefore, we get picture looks like this one. Pi over two, which is minus pi over two. Okay, so we can uh, sign x, but with x, which is negative pi over two to pi over two, is monotone. Therefore, uh, what one it has inverse. So the the inverse is called the arc sine or arc, arc sinus. That's the inverse. So how we define this one? Okay. Um, so y equals sine x uh, if and only if. So we just. Okay. And this is true for x between uh, x between uh, negative pi over two to pi over two. This is true for y between negative one and one. Okay. And similarly, you have uh, with cosine. If we restrict to between zero and pi, so for here is one to one. Okay. Yeah. Inverse is called uh, cosine inverse, like this, or arcus cosine. Okay, so that means uh, if y equals cosine x for x between zero to y, and this is if and only if. Uh, x can be expressed as cosine inverse of y. And y here is between still negative 1 to 2, 1. Okay, so there's the thing. Uh, for tangent, it's slightly different. Or because tangent looks like this one here. Okay. 
here we have one has always as a third. So we choose this one here. We choose between negative pi over two to pi over two. So we choose here. So y equal 10 x, x between two pi over two. Okay. So that's we define tan inverse x inverse. Okay, so uh, or we can write down arcus tangent x. Okay, and the inverse looks like this one here. So uh, if y equals tan x. Uh, then x is equals to tan inverse of y. Okay, so this is true for x between negative pi. Sorry, in this case, the equal equality uh, always excluded or always excluded. And y is between, say, here's because this is asymptote. So y is uh, unbounded. So from can be anything. Okay. So this is what we call inverse trig functions. Okay, so inverse trig function. So similarly, we have, um, let's see, let's go back to the next one. Similarly, we have uh, here, the inverse secant, okay? Inverse secant, secant is this. Okay. All right, so by restricting. The, uh, the inverse. Okay. All right, let's do some example here. I'll just uh, show you uh, a few examples from the book and then let's do some, some more problems. All right, so we compute uh, this sine inverse of uh, pi to over two. So you, you need to recall what kind of angle gives you the sign of that angle is one half of square root of two. So that should be 45 degrees or pi over four. And so that's, that's one. Okay. And part C, for example, uh, compute cosine of cosine inverse 0.6. Okay, so this is belong to between negative one and one, okay? So in this case, cosine and cosine inverse should cancel each other. So you just have this 0 0.6 again. Okay, so you can do this negative one half is two pi over three. Now this a, if you compute this combination, sine inverse of sine three pi over two. However, this won't cancel, uh, just directly cancel, okay? Because three pi over two is outside the domain, okay? So recall that you have sine of 
sorry, I should be like. x inverse is equal x. This is all only true for x between negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So clearly this 3 pi over 2 is outside this one. Okay, So you got to find what sign 3 pi over 2 equals. Okay. So in this case, we will find out. Let's go back to the this one. Okay, three pi over two sine is this negative one. So this equals to well here negative pi over two. So in this case, that should be should be sine inverse of sine negative pi over two. So in this case, now the sine inverse and sine cancel. So what you have left is negative pi over two. So you must pull this negative, uh, sorry, this three pi over two to negative pi over two to something inside the domain of the function of sine. Okay, so let me just uh, note in the note. So when it, it cancel. I'm inverse of sine equal to x. So in this case, sine inverse and sine cancel. If x is between x. Okay. If you have otherwise, so somehow you have to change that x to something inside this one here. Okay, so that's why we have the that uh, sample uh, sine inverse of sine three pi over two. Okay, is this three pi over two? No, this is wrong. Why? Because since three pi over two is outside okay, so the next step is find a uh, alpha inside this one inside the domain so that sine alpha equals to sine three pi over two okay so in this case would be okay but this inside this one so now we have sine first of sine three pi over two equals to uh, uh, sine sorry negative pi over two Okay, so now this inverse and sign cancel. So you have to, okay, so you have to pull everything to the domain. Okay, so you can use calculator to compute this one, right? Uh, call that the, the tangent inverse, the shape, the, the graph looks like this one. So something uh, originally, it's, it has two asymptotes. So after things between here. Okay, of course now if you, um, if you 
switch X and Y, that means reflecting across the, uh, the diagonal. So you would have something that looks like this one. Okay, asymptotic to this. Okay, so that's how you get the, the, the graph of the two. Okay, so let's see, okay, it's, let's do some complications here. Um, okay, so let's see, we have the theorem L of the, we have the, this identity. Let's see how we find this identity. This is something that you don't need to uh, to memorize. Uh, just follow this uh, this rule here. All right. Let's do this one. So my first one, this kind of looks like magic in the beginning. You work with sine and cosine of the inverse, but then somehow you, the, uh, the trig functions disappear. You get only this, uh, this radical square root of one or one minus x squared. So how we get this one, okay. I cover something with the oh if I this one this if I were to this cancel. Okay, so that's the that's the one I all right, so for example here. So if you write something like looks like this one, sine of cosine tangent. Okay. So in this case, uh, all right. So Real numbers. If you do the trig functions, trigonometric functions, it transforms angle into a real number. Okay. And you can work the other way around. From real number becomes angle, certain real numbers. It's inverse trig. Okay. So the result from the inverse uh, trig function is an angle, okay? So this is an angle, say, alpha. Okay, so that angle alpha is cos inverse of x, okay? So in this case, uh, we draw a uh, triangle. Let's draw a triangle, a right triangle. That's not good. So, alpha is cosine. So, in this case. Uh, in this case, let's see. So cosine alpha is, is x. Okay. 
So alpha is the so alpha is this angle here. And we in particular we consider this x to be x over one. And recall that the in cosine x over one is the ratio between the uh, this opposite over this hypotenuse. So this x, this is one. Okay. So this way is this one is the what you call this one over x squared by uh, trig. Sorry. Pythagorean theorem. Okay. All right, so we call this one. This is true for x between, uh, oh, sorry. So it's for alpha between uh, the angles angle between zero and uh, pi. Okay, so at this point we have. All right. So this is the angle. So what we need to compute? We need to compute sine of this. So uh, sine of sine inverse x is sine alpha. Okay. So look at this the triangle. Sine alpha is just this. So you have this formula. Okay, so x for sure, x is between negative one and one. So in order to what's inside the square root is uh, at least zero. Okay, so that's how you get this formula. All right, so let's uh, do other stuff. For example, uh, secant of tangent inverse. Okay. So secant of tangent inverse x. So how we compute this one here? Okay, so we let alpha be the angle alpha to be the infer, uh, inverse tan of x okay and look at this e again triangle so suppose this is alpha so that uh, that means x is tan alpha Tangent is ratio between this and adjacent. All right, so this is x, this is one. x over one. So this gives you by Pythagoras theorem. And we compute now the secant. Secant alpha, which is secant is uh, one over cosine. So cosine is one over this, x over this. So here we have uh, square root of one plus x square over. Oh, I'm sorry. The other way around. Okay, so I miss, made mistake here. So tangent is x over one. Tangent is the this a vertical over this horizontal one. Right? X over one. So here you still get the same thing though. Right? But secant is now the hypotenuse over one. Okay. 
Okay, so we just scan this one. Okay. So no restriction in this case. Okay, because there's inside the square root, so one is always bigger than one, no restriction. So that's how you derive uh, distance. You can attempt to do this, part two, uh, part four. Same trick, using the, the triangle. Okay, so let's do some more problems. Okay, let's do the, uh, the derivative of inverse trig functions. Okay, recall that the, uh, for trig functions, derivative of sine is cosine, and of course, sine is negative sine. The derivative of a tangent is secant square. The derivative of cotangent is minus secant square. The derivative of secant is the secant tangent. And so, you can solve. Okay, so what about the derivative? Okay, so we let y equals, say, uh, sine inverse. Okay, that means x is sine y. And if you take dx, both sides, so implicit differentiations, to get this one, and sine y derivative, with respect to x is sine become cosine, but then you by chain rule you get a multiply by what's inside the sine the y prime. So let's get together. So in this case, y prime be one over cosine y. So this secant y. But we want to, we would like to express this in term of x, not in y. So that's why we need that the uh, diagram again. Okay, so let's see. Here we go. So in this case, in this case, x would be a number, y would be the angle. Okay, because you apply the trig functions, y. So that's why y is angle. Okay, sine of y is x over one. So this is x, this is one. Okay, that means the horizontal is one over x squared, square root. Okay, so we need to compute this secant of y. Secant is, uh, horizontal over going the other way around, hypotenuse over the, uh, the uh, horizontal. So one over okay, so this is the derivative form. Again, we have dx of sine inverse of x is. There's two things I would like to stress out here is that for tangent also. All right, recall that y equals tangent inverse, that means x is uh, 10y. Okay. And take implicit differentiations. One, so this is a secant square, so y prime times secant square of y. Okay, so in this case, y prime should be one over secant square. That means uh, cosine square of y. Okay, so we try to express in term of x. Right, so we start from here. 
So in this case, x, so y would be the angle. This is y. And this tells you that the tangent is x over one. So this is x over one. So this should be square root of one plus x squared. Okay. So the cosine is one over this. Okay. Which is, and then you square it. So cosine y is okay. So this is what you hear. And b d x of tan inverse is there. No? Okay, so let's go back to the, the textbook. So what we have here, derivative of cosine is this one here. Sine first, we get this one, inverse. The other, you can get from the similar formula. Okay, and let's do some example. Side. Okay. Uh, derivative respect to x of sine inverse three x minus one. Okay, sine inverse minus one. So one minus this is square, and that's derivative of three x minus one, which is three. Get this one. You get. Okay. So the that's derivative, but what more, more important is the the integral. So this integral, the integral of one over square root. So x minus x square is sine inverse. Uh, these are the two most important, one and two formula one and two. So dx over one plus x squared, you get tan inverse. Okay, of course you can have the inverse one here. For example, in this case, so how to get this one here? Okay, let's do this one. Well, I mean, where is that? Uh, right, the note is that we know that integral of dx over if this one, then you get slightly first there. Okay, so what if it's just a square? Okay, so integral of Subtract dx. All right, so we take this a out here. Uh, integral one over. If you take a out, there we go. So that looks like one. This is there. And you get this one, one over a square root of 
x over square root of 1 minus x. There we go. Okay, now do substitutions. u equals x over a. This is u. Okay, so the du is just 1 over a times dx. Okay, so it turns out 1 over a, this one is du. Okay, so this is du, the root 1 minus u square, which is a uh, sine inverse d. I will write this in term of x back here. Okay, no more one of a. All right, so that's how you get this one. Okay, and let's do some more example. For tangent, you have this one. This is one over a. Uh, but I don't need to memorize this formula. Just insist on this one and two. Just this, using this one. We'll do some substitutions later on. Okay, I'll do a one example from the uh, from the book. Um, this one, the this is already a square, but this one is a just a number, all right. So uh, let's do this one here. So first, what you we really need to do here is let's do this one square root of five minus nine x square. So this it. Let's make it to one by taking this is nine. There, you take the five out. Okay, so that means p over square root of five, square root of one minus. Now, this is, uh, now we write this down as this 3x over square root of 5 square. Okay, so the 3, 1 over, right? Okay, so this tells you that you use the substitutions. Okay. And try to get this e back here. All right, so that's this one. So u equals equal, we get this one here. Equal to three half, so it's three square root of five, integral of the x over 1 minus 3x over square root of 5 squared. So in this case, you would do substitutions. u equals 3x over square root of 5. Right here. So du is 1 over square root of 5 
I'm sweating. Yes. And this basically. You get a sign in front of you. This U here is there. Just do directly from the book. So this exponential e to the x over 4 plus 9 e to the 2x. We see this is a square, this is a square. So this is two square, this is uh, 3ex squared. All right, so let's see. So we let use the 3x squared. So let's see you go this one. Substitute back to get this one. There we go. This one. And what you get is one over three times uh, this one, tangent over two. See, what you get. All right, so let's one more from the exact. Let's do, for example, not this one. All right. We'll pick up some some problem from. Paul, what is it? You so for example, this a number twenty seven. Two twenty seven. So get sine of cosine inverse three fifth plus cosine inverse five thirteen. Okay. So we suppose this is an angle alpha, this is an angle beta. Okay, because this is the, the product of a inverse trick is an echo. Right? So in this case, this is a sine alpha plus beta. So this is, remember trick formulas. So sine alpha times cosine beta and plus sine beta cosine alpha, you permute sine and cosine as well as the, the angle. All right, so we need to complete this one. Okay, so let's, let's do this one first. So this angle is this one, and the cosine is three-fifth, the cosine three-fifth. So it's three, five, so this would be four. So in this case, sine alpha would be four fifth. Okay. And sine alpha, cosine alpha, uh, for sure. Cosine alpha is three fifth again. Okay. And this one, 
if this is beta. And the cosine of beta is 513. Cosine is, so this is 513. And this is a, let's see, 12, right? So this is the triplet, Pythagorean triplet. So in this case would be what we need, the sine beta, all right. Sine beta is, uh, again, this 12, 13. And cosine beta is, beta is 513, 513. Okay, so in the end, this gives you sine alpha, or third, or fifth, times cosine beta, sine beta, Uh, times cosine alpha there. Okay. And the same token here, you can, uh, this is cosine alpha plus beta, for example, here is cosine. This is double angle. This is sine of two alpha. So alpha is ten. So ten to alpha is. Let's see. You recall the the formula for that? Uh, ten one minus. So take it. 2 10 alpha over 1 plus uh, 10 square alpha. Right, you check this. this one. Okay, so what you need to compute is the. Is that true? Yeah, I think this one. So you need to find uh, 10 alpha. Okay, so we need to take this formula here. So that's all right. One more example is this. Okay, here. I just take 69. Let's do 69. Do this one here. All right. Um, the problem with this is the we we know this is the integral. It becomes a tangent inverse if this is constant, uh, something square plus constant square. Okay. So let's do this trick. This is completing the square. This is, uh, say, x. Let's concentrate in for the first two fact, uh, two terms. So this becomes x minus 3 squared. OK. But then uh, you have to subtract. Um, so this already x squared. This is minus 6x. But then you have to subtract 9, the square of 3. Okay, so that's the uh, same as the first two terms, plus 13. Okay, so this is becomes x minus 3 uh, plus uh, 4. And again, this is, 
this is the sum of squares now. One with the factor x and the other one is constant. Okay. Or you can write something that looks like this one instead. This is take four out and you have one over x minus three over two, say this one. There we go. Okay, so by doing something, uh, let's do this one. It's just dx. And what we have here is the uh, numerator is just 4, 1 plus there. Okay, so this one four. But it's close to what we have there. Okay, and now do substitutions. U equals x plus three over two. So du here is uh, one half. Let's see. All right, so. Okay, u over 2, so this is just 1 over it, right? So if you substitute this, you get 1 half, this will become du, you get 1 half, because this 1 half is absorbed by this du, dx over 2. So let me write down this one half with the dx is dx over two is this du. Okay, half is one. U. Yep. Square. So it is one half of tan inverse u plus c. Which is equals to which equal to uh, b. Right. So that's uh, what we have from. Uh, from this chapter, from the sections. All right. So next, what we do in the next one is the last section of our uh, calculus in this this semester. So hyperbolic function there in first. Let me uh, let me continue this with the, the second videos. All right. I'll stop the share here and stop the, the video.